making a YouTube subscribe counter with the Max 7219 controlled 8 digit 7 segment display module and an ESP8266 on a Wemos D1 mini board. I'm using a Wemos D1 mini module and a 7 segment 8 digit display controlled by a Max 7219 chip and it's connecting over Wi-Fi, accessing YouTube subscribe data, and displaying the subscriber count. There will be links in the description for anything I'm mentioning, and the libraries used will be linked in the sketch. I'm using the LED control library for the Max 7219, and on the Arduino page there's some info on how to use this, including a seven-segment demo that prints out the word Arduino. And to get the subscriber statistics from YouTube, we use Brian Locke's Arduino YouTube API. And over on GitHub, there's info here on how to set everything up and how to test your API key and all of that. I went through this in a lot more detail in a previous YouTube subscriber count video I'll link to below. It might cover some pitfalls getting the ESP8266 to run in case you can't get it to retrieve the subscriber count. So you can refer to that if you're having any problems or if you've never used an API key. Here's the simple circuit I put together using the Wemos D1 Mini and the 8-digit 7-segment display module. It's SPI controlled by these three pins for data clock and chip select. This Max 7219 chip runs on 5 volts. The datasheet will tell you the minimum logic high input should be 3.5 or greater volts but it seems to work with these 3 volt logic outputs from ESP8266. So the sketch I put together looks like this. I've mentioned what libraries, including the ESP8266 board file, are required. And because, especially for projects with ESP8266 and with using Arduino JSON, in the past many people, including myself, have had issues getting sketches running, and it turns out the versions of various things matter. So I started listing what I'm using, including the version of Arduino IDE. Sometimes that can create a dependency. And in the past, doing subscriber counters, the version of ESP8266 board file and version of Arduino JSON mattered a lot, so I'm still using the same versions I worked with before. So we include everything we need for getting this running. We define our SPI pins for the Max 7219, which are D8, 7, and 6. We only have one Max 7219 chip in circuit because you can cascade them. The one chip controls all eight digits. And since we only have one device, its address is going to be zero because it's the first device. So we create the LED control interface on these SPI pins, and we only have one device controlling all of our digits. You would enter your Wi-Fi login credentials, your API key, and your YouTube channel ID so that you can log into the network and go and get your subscriber info. How to get your channel ID was also covered in that previous subscriber counter video linked below. Each of the eight digits on our seven segment display I'm storing in an array. So we create a Wi-Fi and YouTube API object. I have it set to go update the subscriber counter every three minutes just so we don't pull the API too often. You only get so many pull requests per 24 hour period. In our setup we do the usual joining Wi-Fi stuff and we have to initialize the seven segment display. So we take it out of shutdown set the brightness halfway, and clear the seven segment display. So I'm printing out status info in the serial monitor. So as we are trying to join Wi-Fi and waiting for it to connect, we see the dots going as a progress bar. But when the circuit is in use and we're not connected up to a serial monitor, I use the decimal points on the seven segment to just scroll the dots back and forth. After we've joined, pull the YouTube API immediately and display that subscribe count on the display. Then down in the main loop, we will wait three minutes and then update again. If I don't pull in the setup routine initially, the display is just going to have nothing on it until the three minutes have passed. I created this 
commented out test display function. That's when I wanted to double check a few things to make sure I'm using the seven segment display properly. It shows that word Arduino on the display and it also tests my ability to set leading zeros as blanks because if your count is four digits long you don't want it to show zero 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 and then four digits. It's better to just blank it and have four digits. So let's see how the test display looks. So it shows the word Arduino and one by one it adds one extra digit to the display and has leading zeros eliminated. So for the main loop polling YouTube API, this is almost identical to the demo sketch that comes with the YouTube API to go in and get the YouTube stats. So after we get the channel statistics from the API, I have a variable called sub count and it copies in the subscriber count out of the API channel stats. Then I can take sub count and put it on the display and in the serial monitor. After we've read the channel stats, we update the timer counter so we can count another three minutes. After we've gotten those statistics, we display the digits. So in this function, what we need to do is take our single number and split out the individual digits and put them in that array that stores each digit for the seven segment display module. We use modular math for this and there's a modulo calculator over on goodcalculators.com and it also explains how this works a bit including on your exact calculation you've just done. It shows you a breakdown of what's going on. So that's why I like this calculator. So if you take mod 10 of a given number, the result is going to basically be the rightmost digit. Modular math gives you the remainder of your division. So 125 divided by 10 would be 12.5. So the remainder is 5. Therefore, the result of 125 mod 10 is 5, which simplifies down to it's the digit on the right. So now that we have an array of seven digits and we want to blank leading zeros, we just have this single long if else statement and we're tracking where the leftmost digit is. So here's our array of eight digits numbered zero through seven. And let's say again, our actual number we want to display is one, two, five. So it has five leading zeros we want to suppress. In order to detect where the legitimate leftmost digit is, we start way over at digit position seven. And all we want to check is, is the digit that's here greater than zero? If so, then this is part of a true number. Like if this number was really this big, then these zeros in here are part of the number, so we keep them. It's just that if the leftmost is zero, we know that's a meaningless digit. So we keep going all the way until we get a non-zero, and that's where the true number starts. So we start over at digit seven. Is it greater than zero? If this is zero, then we end up in this next else if. In the number one, two, five, digit position two is actually where the one is. So we get down to here. If the digit in position two is greater than zero, which is true because it's one, then the leftmost digit is two. And we're done with this statement. So we have now figured out digit position two is where this sub count begins. And we want to blank out anything between three and seven. So we have this little for loop. It goes through whatever the count is that represents where the zeros want to be blanked out. The LED control library knows that when it sees this, it will just not display anything on that digit. So now we loop through all eight digits, go out on the display and actually set whatever character represents each digit. That's how we can get the YouTube subscriber count out onto a seven segment display using a Mac 7219 controller. And for that matter, now we know we can take any number and manipulate it, blank the leading zeros if needed, and just use this sketch, adapt it to display whatever number you want. The only thing left to do now is build some sort of enclosure for this module.